Last week amongst the madness and mayhem, chaos didn't reign. But Mace did for a place alongside Napalm in the series semi-finals. Who'll join them? Let's find out as we get heavy with the metal here on Robot Wars. Gentlemen, please welcome K9's pedigree chum, Craig Charles. When the Cold War ended and military dictators around the world felt the nuclear soled boots of Uncle Sam up their backsides, we all felt safe. Once we worried about melting in a nuclear explosion, now we worry about melting cheese in our Argos catalogue fondue set. But as you sit there reclining in your world of leather armchairs, introducing your grandchildren to uncommonly good butter candy, remember this. A new war rages. It makes the Cold War look like a hot summer's day. It's called Robot Wars. And to prove it, six iron-plated superpowers are going to battle for a place in our series semi-finals. Let's bring out the troops. First, from High Wycombe, Challenger. With its sleek lines and Ferrari dashing red, waspish yellow and black stripes, Challenger's weapons include an angle grinder disc, stainless steel spikes, driven by its own customized gearbox, weighs in at 74 kilos, second lightest in the round. Will that be costly? From Cambridge, Mortis. Back again from the first wars, controversially eliminated before really leaving the trenches. This team mean for revenge and see its second for this series. With the titanium Kevlar laminated shell, the martial art tantrum so Blade is powerful enough to rip up roads. From London, Oblivion. Oblivion, powered by Sinclair C5 motors, has front prongs made from hardened steel. A Trinity School project, but should they have added more weight, it's the lightest in the field at 58.7 kilos. Second fastest at 12 miles an hour can still carry on motoring, even if it's knocked on its head. From Nuneaton. Dreadnought. Another First Wars veteran is back, and with improved weaponry. Fantastically frightening forklifts can lift up to 70 kilos. It has directional change relays. The original wheelchair motors were a bargain. The improvements, 200 pounds. Will it prove money well spent for the yellow and black bubble? From Abington, Ramesses II. The team which gave a scarab last time around walk like Egyptians again. Ramesses II with an unusual high-density industrial polyethylene shell which could clog up chainsaws. And then there's always that spring-loaded arm to bring the opposition a winter of discontent. From the University of Reading, Griffin. Griffin looks like a moving video cassette recorder, but look for the fast-forward button. At 19 mph, no one can match that for us. Its lifting arm is powered by linear actuators. To you and me and you, Craig, that means electronic pistons. They look big, they look impressive, but so did the Titanic. And one of our robots is going down. In the first of our three rounds, the gauntlet. This is the gauntlet. It's been described as an obstacle course, but wipe out any memory you ever had about school sports day on a sunny afternoon. It's still a race to the end, but this time, circular saws, a flame pit, and the might of all of our house robots await our six gallant metallic athletes. Roboteers, stand by. Challenger driven by Steve Dove, the teammates Andy Byrne and Peter Rose. On the front here we have four sharp stainless steel spikes which are connected to the Formula 3 racing car spring to eliminate any large shocks going through the chassis of the robot. Over here we have a milling machine cutter which has three carbide inserts. At the back here we have a tungsten carbide saw spinning at 3000 RPM which goes up and down in this fashion. Three, two, one, Now, with that 24-volt industrial motor, that's a nippy start, and he's chosen the breeze blocks. A bit like knocking your head against a brick wall. Ooh, not once, but twice for Challenger. The heavyweight. Now, the driver, Steve Dove, wants to ride to the North Cape on a motorcycle. Let's be honest, Steve, he wouldn't get beyond Hadrian's Wall. Look, you can't get beyond this one. And look behind you, Challenger. Shunts after you. And with the blade and with the pickaxe, you could get impaled. And with the 25mm ground clearance, you could get beached on that ramp. And in major trouble here, Challenger, for Steve Dove. 
Dove? When doves cry? A prince of a performance? I don't think so. And with Matilda about to come in and shake those tail feathers, this could be the robot formerly known as Vicious. Time is ticking down on the challenge of Challengers! The Challenger team, come up to the podium, lads. Come up to the podium. You seem determined to, to remove every brick in that wall. You got kind of caught on the side of the seesaw, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we, couldn't, we thought we'd broken down, but then we got a bit of backwards motion and we realised we were just off the ground. When we saw that motion, we thought we were still in with the chart, so we kept going for it. Well, you still could be in the chart, like wait to. and see. Yeah. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, uh, so much hard work. But 5.3 metres only, that looks as if it'll be beaten. OK, guys, we'll get around this scratch <laughs> and mutilated body. Oh, okay. Matilda had a good go over. Yeah, yeah. Best shot. Well, I'll let you go and inspect the damage proper, okay. and we'll catch up with you later. All right, thanks very much. Who's on? Roboteers, stand by. Mortis, driven by Rob Knight, back again. Mortis is back. It's been extensively reworked since the last war. Um, new transmission on it, new components. The chassis has been rewelded and repaired. The front's been redone. The axe has been totally rebuilt since it broke last time over Leibok. Oh, that's not too much of a weapon, is it, really? Oh, and that is Lee Bot! Pepper Bot! You could pour pepper out of that Lee Bot machine! Um, totally new set of mechanisms, so hopefully this time will be a bit more reliable. Same electronics, um, new armour, and altogether a generally improved machine. Three, two, one, activate! Which route for Mortis? Again, the wall. Oh. Right tip for Mortis and it powers its way through the wall. Will we use that blade on Arthur Chilcott's beard? And get a shave. The blade scythes the electric car motor's power up and over the ramp. And there is Bash and Matilda blocking the way. What's going to be your tactic for Gauntlet? I'm going to pole straight into either Shant or Matilda and hammer them as hard as I can with the axe to one of them falls over. That's great and simple. We like it. Matilda blocks the way through to the finishing line. All but taking punishment. Look at that Tanto blade we warned you about. Matilda beaten. Bash is in there as well. Will we see the flamethrower? Still Matilda taking punishment this time on the tusks. He's reached the finishing line almost. Matilda blocks. He's over the finishing line. Now this is an arrogance of power. Taking on the house robots and they don't like it. He's finished. They're over the line. They're through. But Matilda and Bash have got long memories and they don't like you. This is where the retribution started. They didn't like him coming back and having another go and into the pit. But Mort is through. Completing the course. We've proved that we've got a really destructive weapon here. I think it's the most awesome weapon on this site. I don't believe that anybody else has got anything as spe spectacular as this to look at. Roboteers, stand by. Oblivion from Trinity School, they're Tottenham fans. There's two pincers at the front, so you can stand the robots, and it can, it's just time to travel upside down. The robot is powered by two Sinclair Seafoam motors, fully driven. We're hoping for a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour if we need it. Three, two, one, activate. Now, will they go for the wall as well? No, they're veering, and they're going to take on the house robots. Matilda's down there, and the first robot you will see beyond the spike, ridden well, is Shunt. With the axe, you'll see the axe in a couple of seconds' time. Shunt pushing Oblivion back onto that spike. Again, riding the spike well underneath Shunt this time. We're not going for the brick wall. We're going uh, down the side against uh, Matilda. Hopefully fairly well. So this blue light here, yeah. is it to call the ambulance after Matilda's <laughs> got you? Uh, no, hopefully not. One of the team, Surin Belandra, likes weightlifting. They'll need some weight to get away from Matilda. And the chainsaw cutting into that patterned aluminium shell. The same as used for the Gauntlet ramp. Reverse, backwards, sideways, forwards. It doesn't matter when you're taking on Shunt and Matilda. And you've got the death pit there as well. Oblivion awaits. Literally. Bye-bye. Oh, tottering, teetering. Tilda's tusks. Tata. 
Lads, what can I say? Shunted, pickaxed, chainsawed, and then sent to oblivion. <laughs> it seemed to be able to stand up to a good bit of stick, though, didn't it? Yeah, surprised. You felt it well. You might have done enough to make it through. You never know. Yeah. Give the round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. They are through, rising from the pits of Robot Wars Hell. Oblivion 5.8 meters. Challenger nervous. Look at that. Two robots lining up yeah. to shove you both in the bed. To shove you in the bed. Oh, it was Matilda who did the worst. Cut, cut through there. A bit longer and should have gone right through the electronics, I bet. But your light can't yeah. be yeah. yeah, yeah. The light survived at least, yeah. yeah. Robot ears, stand by. Ken Feltwell driving, David Bowles alongside him. The only thing that's really remained the same since the last war is the bodywork, which we've had to repair quite a bit. And we've beefed up the forks here to make them a bit more powerful. We've changed also the drive mechanism for the forks. We've lowered it down considerably, so we've got an advantage there. And we've gone to wheelchair motors instead of starter motors, which hopefully will give us better performance. Three, two, one, activate. What will Dreadnought have learnt from the first wars? Another brick in the wall. And another. Through, though, Dreadnought. But not powering on. What are they doing here? Into reverse. Now, if they're not going to take on that wall, they are surely. No, to the left. Well, they're going the other way now. Now, that's that's a waste of time taking on the robots. Ken Feltwell, a permanent clay modeler. He plays the trombone. He's showing a lot of brass here to take on Matilda. There, the shot from the Matilda cam. Dreadnought powering beyond Matilda. And through, and well, they made it in the end. First of all, you remove only one brick in the wall, you pull back, smash the wall to pieces, and then you change your mind, come back here, and go down this lane. That seemed like too much hard work to get through the brick wall, so we thought we'd just try and go for the gap. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Because the brothers-in-law are through. Confirmation, Dreadnought completing the course in the fastest time so far. Robot ears, stand by. Chris Krosky and Peter Kybert, they were in the first wars with Scarab, described as a slow-moving cheese sandwich, certainly a rare bit. It's an improvement over the robot that we had in the last war, in that we've gone from wheels to tracks, which means we'd have no ground clearance problems anymore. Uh, we've also improved the hammer mechanism, which is very similar to the one that we had in the last war. Um, we've also uh, now got very thick plastic armour, uh, which is very, very light. Um, but very hard to cut if you're set up to cut steel, which is what the robots around here all seem to be set up to cut. Three, two, one, activate. And the chaps from Abingdon have spent £1,500 on those modifications. Slow moving and steady. Ramesses the second. Takes on the wall. Now there's that four foot long hammer, and it almost overthrew Ramesses the second there. Almost overbalancing. The motor, very highly biased for that hammer release. Has it got enough power to go beyond the bricks and take on the ramp? Behind, waiting is Shunt. I don't think Shunt will close, though. And there, Matilda, just in case. Ramesses can get up and over the ramp. Matilda is there with the chainsaw. The chainsaw against the spring-loaded arm weapon. A mace, nine kilos, 400 pounds of spring release. Matilda's tusks and the chainsaw to take on that polyethylene industrial shell. And I think they've done it up. Matilda tries to flip. Cease. I think they've done it up. Who wants a picture of Matilda's backside? Ramesses the second. They're through. 10.9 meters. Robot ears, stand by. Oliver Steeples driving there on the right with Ben Steeples, his brother. I can't tell you much about it because it's classified, but I'll show you the weapon, which is a lifting arm that can lift and flip other robots. Three, two, one, activate. Was it just me, or did that lifting arm look very, very slow? Beyond the spikes, well, thinking about them anyway, the movable video cassette recorder with the two front prongs. One of the house robots is going over. I've got a lifting arm, so I might as well use it. Well, Ben, I've 
and I'm hoping you're the sensible brother here. Is that what you're hoping for as well? Yeah, I've been screaming at him to go down the other way, but he wouldn't listen, and they will take out a house robot, and he'll end up in a pit like mortis. And he says he enjoyed watching Oliver making an idiot of himself in the first wars. But what can Oliver do now? A graduate from Reading University flipped up. You can see the Matilda cam there close up. And Oliver, who loves 3D cartoons, this is a little bit Mickey Mouse, and you could be on the way to Pluto. Cease. Oh, unlucky. We've enjoyed having the brothers for their confirmation. The worst result so far. Griffin, out. So the war goes on. You don't regret spending the, the whole of your summer building a robot? No. Thanks to everyone who helped me in the workshop and bits and pieces. I know who they are. Cool. Thank you very Thanks. much. One robot down, one to be eliminated in the trials. Now, in days of old, when knights were bold and you could still get around in for under a fiver, people used to spear each other just for fun. That's what people did before robot wars. Now it's armor-plated robots facing each other across a field of battle, fighting for the hand of some fair mechanical maiden. Each of our surviving robots will joust Matilda. If they can survive the initial blow, that it'll be a battle to see who gains the most ground. The robot who puts in the worst performance will waltz out of the tournament. Hey, let the trials begin. Roboteers, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. All about power and pace, Oblivion can get up to 12 miles an hour, but immediately flipped and dangerously near to the edge of the ramp. If it goes off, the adjudicators will measure where it rests. Rusts in pieces, in other words. 5.6 metres, that's not a bad run for Oblivion. <gasps> Yeah. It's a good thing we didn't turn it on, actually. It would have shorted everything out. Yeah. It would have been totally destroyed. Are you happy with that performance? Because you've got, you've got really far. Yeah, yeah hopefully the judges yeah. will see it our way. Yeah. <laughs> Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Mortis, 20 kilos heavier than Oblivion, meets Matilda head to head. Now, one of Matilda's tusks is caught in underneath those tank-style tracks on the Reynolds conveyor chain there, you see. And Mortis is actually pushing Matilda back there. Ben Impey, one of the team, was once involved in a mileage marathon car to see how far his vehicle could go on a gallon of petrol. He didn't get very far. Will he get far here? This is good work by Mortis, dancing and waltzing with Matilda. Who'd want to dance with Matilda? With her petro breath. But they're through Mortis. 6.1 meters. Well done. So I just thought I'd smash it and see what happened, but unfortunately, um, she's definitely a bit close to the ground, so I went up on top. But still, even when I'm up in the air, she couldn't push me backwards and I was pushing her at times, so uh, couldn't get off of her. So you're happy? Reasonably, we're through. Get a fight something next round. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. Low ground clearance for Challenger could come in handy. Oh dear, look at the steering. Steve Dove, take a breathalyzer for goodness sake. Get a grip on him, boys. He's not got the grips with Matilda. Power, power, push. This is not looking good for Challenger. They've gone backwards. Minus 0.1 meter. What a nightmare. Jousting does really depend on the robot going in a straight line, doesn't it? It does, yes. It does go in a straight line if it's driven right. Okay. Well, you didn't do too badly, I suppose. Well, we just got a minus figure. <laughs> it could be worse, but not much worse. No, not much worse. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. There's the heraldic shield on the edge of Dreadnought. Getting into the spirit of things. Something flew off. I don't know whether it was from Matilda or Dreadnought, who seemed to be impaled on the ramp. The wheels slip and slide away, but they've done enough. They're through. Dreadnought 5.4 metres. They're in the next round. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two... One. Activate. A 
as long as Rama sees the second isn't pushed back down that ramp by Matilda, those boys will go through. Ooh, look at the mace on top. Perhaps that's to grapple on to Matilda and hang on in there. And they're hanging on in there at the moment, they're being pushed back. And Challenger will hope they'll get pushed back all the way. And they're blocking Matilda's route. There's the mace. Now square on to Matilda there. Blocking Matilda's way through with the tusks. As long as they stay there, one second to go, they're through. Too late now for Matilda. Matilda, cease when you're told to. Naughty girl. But Ramesses through. Challenger, fade away. After the joust, not too much damage sustained, no? No, not too much. Okay, so Dreadnought still in, still alive and kicking. Challenger, actually, it's another story for Challenger. And sadly, you're already packing to go home. All right? When you've got to go, you've got to go. Oh. Four robots have been good. Very, very good. But now they are consigned to Robo Hell, the fiery pit of the arena. Our four survivors have been randomly drawn in battle against each other. The winners will then fight for a place in our series semi-finals. Now, to win, all you've got to do is beat the brains out of your opponents, or at least immobilize them. If there's no clear-cut winner, a decision will be made by our panel of judges. They'll be looking at style, control, damage, and aggression. Our judges are Eric Dickinson, a veteran from Robot Wars in America, Professor Noel Sharkey, head of robotics at Sheffield University, and Adam Harper, an engineering specialist. Hey, 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 put the boot in! Dreadnought against Oblivion. That's the first semi-final. Three, two, one. Oblivion is the lighter and the faster. Dreadnought has those fearsome forks and no mobility, it would seem. There's something wrong here with Dreadnought, I'm sure. Impaled on the spike. Can they get off there now, though? Must have been the spike that stopped them. No, they're not moving. Dreadnought. Dreadnought. There's something wrong here with Dreadnought. And the house robot sends it there, Sir Killalot. Also in there is Shunt. And that's Roast Beetle. And I'll tell you who loves Roast Beetle. Mm, Matilda. Tasty. Matilda in on Dreadnought. Lifting it away from the flaming pit. Sir Killalot, there's the kill cam. Lifting up. Oh, that's really good. A lift on Dreadnought. In comes the axe. Dreadnought here in terminal decline and incline. Impaled. The body shell ripped away. It's only a question of time. And there's the oblivion. Totally unharmed. Dreadnought. Can't move. That was ghastly, and surely they know it. They do. Cease. It's all over. Come up to the podium. Well, guys, we just don't know what happened there. We had no control at all. Well, they certainly moved in for the kill, though, didn't they? And no mercy at all. And they were smiling. Yeah, they were. <laughs> they were smiling. That was a serious mugging. Tell me who's up there. Oh, my daughter's up there. She's in tears. Your daughter's in the audience in tears. Oh, she's really upset. Well, she's not the only one. You didn't do very well in that last round. Yeah, no, not particularly. <laughs> Would it have helped if you'd switched the machine on? We did switch the machine on, but I think as we put the cover back over it, we yeah. knocked the, not uh, the key out. The key out. We have one of these keys which switches the power on and off. As the case was put back on, the key was knocked out. I found it on the floor after we'd finished, right in the position under the robot. So no so power, <laughs> no, no power movement. Trashed. The second semi-final. Ramis is the second against Mortis. Three, two, one. Yes. So, Killalot, you've just seen grotesquely keeping hold of his scalp from the Dreadnought. There's the Tanto Killer Blade. Made from the same metal they use on pneumatic road tools. The main blade of Mortis, but Ramus is the second, pushing him back into the PPZ. The perimeter patrol zone owned by the house robots, owned by Sir Killalot. Owned by Shunt in there as well. Ramesses the second nearly flipped up. The underdogs for this heat. Away goes Mortis. Now spinning to have a charge. Seated second for the whole of the Robot Wars competition. Strong favourite here. Ramesses the second is in trouble. They're queuing up to destroy him, the house robots. And Sir Killalot 
turns towards the flaming pit, and I just wonder, I wonder whether this will be a barbecue! Barabbas is the second, surely out! The Mortis boys aren't happy, I can tell you! They're not happy, but I think Mortis are going through! They may have problems, but it's burnout for Ramesses! They look like he's got a bit more, too much power for you, that Mortis fella. Something seems to have gone in our drive system, so we lost the melody. It was a bit scary when Killlock picked you up and dangled you over the fire and sort of barbecued you like a burger. We are flameproof, no worries about the fire. <laughs> Never mind, guys. Anyway, Mortis, one more fight and you're through to the series semi finals. You're feeling confident? Uh, we'll be more confident, but something's going on with the drive, so it's getting really bad interference. Congratulations, lads. Give them a round of applause. What's going wrong now? Uh, we're just trying, to, wrong. just trying to protect it because Mortis more has got a reputation of going through things. You're in a <laughs> Tonight's heat final Oblivion against Mortis. Negatives stand by. The boys from Trinity School with Oblivion, the students from Cambridge University with Mortis. Three, two, one. Mortis, the second favourite for the whole of this Robot Wars competition against Oblivion, whose major hope is to avoid that blade. Not doing a good job, the boys there. And perhaps drag Mortis towards the PPZ, the perimeter patrol zone in the house robots. Certainly, the Cambridge University students have the upper hand with the weaponry. Perfection. Perforation. <laughs> Look at that. Like a sieve heading towards oblivion. Could be now. Rob Knight, a man in control of Mortis again. He wants to say a big thank you to the engineering department of Cambridge University. This will be a good way to say thank you. Oblivion looking tired. Could be in the pit with the tires. You see, Matilda just waiting there at the top of the picture. Waiting her chance. Oblivion trying to run away into the corners. Don't forget this final, though. Judged on style, control, damage, and aggression. Holy smoke. It looks like the end for Oblivion here. Mortis being pushed back, though. A brave battle by the boys from Trinity School. The robot only cost 700 pounds. Mortis cost 10 grand. And he's the favourite. And probably has done just about enough to win this heat final. Toying with oblivion like a cat toys with a mouse. I was trying to stick it down me old, but it kept on moving out of the way whenever I got in here. Well, give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, from the show that's scarier than yours, you've been bitten by Robot Wars. Good night. Watch out for Madonna on Top of the Pops, coming up on BBC Two for a change, and after that, tough stuff in print. Bookworm talks to thriller writer Robert Harris in half an hour. We had a few problems, but they didn't get, they, they didn't get right through, so we were surprised we were. We're still working right at the end, so...